Welcome to today's video. Today's video we're going to be talking about how it's important sometimes to get your battery nice and hot and where this sometimes can be beneficial. Weather at the moment in the UK is cold. I mean, in the UK we love, love to talk about the weather and moan about it is, is our, also our favourite skill. I mean, at the moment it is freezing. It's zero degrees. It's cold, it's minus one, zero degrees. Now, that might not seem cold to some of my Canadian viewers, some of my viewers all around the rest of the world, like Norway, where it, it really does get cold, but we're British, so we like to moan, and to me it's cold. It's, it's, it's below zero, so it's, it's freezing. Well, technically it is. <laughs> but if you've got a Tesla Model 3, Model S or Model X, you'll understand the importance of getting a warm battery to supercharge at high rates. And Teslas are extremely clever in the way they do this. Now a Tesla Model 3, Model X and Model S, if you've got a supercharger destination put into that sat nav, before you get to said charger, the charger, uh, the heater, sorry, in your Model 3's battery pack system or Model S or Model X, will start to try and heat the battery pack up. And the reason it does this is the battery can't charge fast if it's too cold. Now, there's a lot of science behind that, and if you want to know the full reason behind it, go and check out Ewan McTuck's channel, Plug Life Television, where he explains to you the, the how, how all the battery chemistry works. He is a battery chemist, he is Dr. Ewan McTuck, and he is probably one of the smartest people I know, but doesn't like to admit it, but he is. Ewan, if you're watching today's video, you are one of the smartest people I know, and you are the videos he produces on his channel are just fascinating if you like tech details go and have a look at you and channel it's fantastic but batteries like to get warm warm batteries charge faster so tesla have come up with a solution which they actually stole from mercedes which was to preheat the battery prior to getting to a charging destination and this improves the charge rate speed now annoyingly apart from mercedes and tesla there's no other car i believe that can do it I I think Jaguar are experimenting with a way of doing it themselves, but as far as I know, uh, the BMW, the Zoe, and the Leaf can't do it. Now, the BMW i3 does have a firmly managed pack, and so does the Zoe. The Leaf, obviously, we know doesn't from rapid gate issues, but the, the, the Zoe 22s can't heat the battery, and the Zoe 40s only heat the battery while it's charging. Now, the i3, as I just said, can preheat its pack, and I've done a video top right on how to make the pack preheat, but unfortunately, it only preheats the pack on leaving from charging. It doesn't pre-warm the pack for getting to a charger. So the problem here is you have a car with a, not a depleted battery, but a you know, relatively depleted battery, and you need to charge, and it's not warm enough to take its max charge rate. What do you do? Well, if you've got a Zoe, BMW or a, a Leaf, the things you can do to preheat your battery is first you can go down below and click subscribe on me and give that video a thumbs up because everyone likes doing that on all my videos. Especially those people who like to give me a thumbs down every now and again for no reason. But yeah, please give me a subscribe on the video and if you like seeing my videos, please click that notification bell and you'll be notified every time there's a new video. Now, if you want to warm your battery pack up on a non-Tesla car, non-Mercedes car that can't preheat its pack, your only solution is to drive it like you stole it. And I mean literally drive the car hard on the... Now, if you're on a motorway and you know you're going to a destination, just drive it really hard. I mean, if you've got, say, 20 miles range and the charger's five miles away, just keep accelerating really hard and slowing down really fast and accelerating really hard. Do lots of regen and lots of acceleration and really get that pack nice and warm. And Deplating that range quicker will actually benefit you because the charge rate will be a lot quicker. And I mean, a lot quicker. So I mean, this is this is a very, very, very poorly filmed video on my phone that I did for the Renault Zoe Owners Club of me plugging in a Renault Zoe which had six, a six Celsius temperature on the battery pack and it had 47% remaining range. So, you know, it's a half empty battery. It should charge at the full 22 kilowatts on this three phase 22 kilowatt charger at work. It's a Q motor Zoe and it should basically pull about 22, maybe a little bit more. Um, so this is what happened. 
at work, sorry for the quality of the video, when I plugged it in. On a 22 kilowatt Zappi with a Q motor, will it pull more than 22? The battery's at just less than 50%. So let's plug that in. And sorry for the dodgy camera angle, plug that one in. Put me pin number in. Ah, some time delay, hold on. A few moments later. Oh, oh, here we go. So we're ramping up. 10, 15, 17, 18, 18 and a half. Ah, uh, maybe the battery's not warm. As you can see there, with a six Celsius pack, the most it could pull was 17 kilowatts, which wasn't bad. Now, six degrees, that is from a little bit of hard driving on a bypass, but not amazingly hard, just a drive from work, sorry, from home, so completely cold overnight battery, to work, which is not many miles, five, six miles tops, on a, on a bypass to try and warm the battery pack up. Didn't get very fast, so, what I then decided to do was a good idea, was to take the car back out and after it got to about 62%, I decided to take it out. Now, I left work with 36 miles and I managed to go down the bypass four times and run it down to two miles. And I got back to work with dash, dash, dash. And I think it was, so oh, I've got it written down, I think it was 6% charge. So I got back 6% charge, plugged in my diagnostic system and I was getting a battery temperature of 28 Celsius. So quite an improvement in battery temperature. And what did it pull when I plugged it in? Yes, it basically pulled 21.1 kilowatt hours of electricity. No, not kilowatt hours, kilowatts. I always make this mistake. Just let me just firm this up. If you're talking battery size capacity, it's kilowatt hours. If you're talking about measurement of um, how much sort of power you're drawing from a charger, then it's kilowatts. So if you're charging, it's kilowatts. And if you're talking battery size, it's kilowatt hours. I often make the mistake verbally. I know the difference, but if you ever want to know the full sort of like acronyms of electric cars, if you go to evnick.com, I've got a list on there of all the EV slangs, acronyms. If you want to know what FEV means, BEV means, kilowatts, kilowatt hours, and all those differences, there's a list on my website, evnick.com. If you go over there, have a read of them and you'll, you'll learn you'll learn a little bit of information but like I said it was pulling 21.2 kilowatts by getting up to a nice warm 26 27 degree Celsius temperature now that is showing you the difference of what a couple of degrees temperature can make now the, the battery carried on pulling that 21.2 kilowatts all the way up to 85 percent on the battery charge. So it wasn't to do with the fact that my battery before was at 47%, no. It was all to do with the temperature. So if you've got a Renault Zoe, a Nissan Leaf, or a BMW i3, and you're leaving your you know, destination, you're trying to drive very efficiently on a very, very cold day, and you've got a bit of spare miles before you get to a rapid, then my lesson to you is drive it like you stole it, heat that battery temperature up, get it nice and warm, and you'll benefit with a higher charge rate, which in theory should save you a little bit of time. They should balance the way out, especially in the winter months. In the summer, it doesn't matter too much because the ambient temperature will keep the battery temperature a little bit higher anyway. But in the colder winter months, then it is important to try and get those temperatures up because I often see Renault Zoe owners moaning about the temperatures not right and they're not getting the right charge speeds. Thank you very much for watching this week's video. Don't forget to go and click subscribe. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.